No, it's okay, it's okay. Oh, Maulana. Assalamualaikum. Ya min sharafin ajib. Wa amrin gharib. Wa shayin farid. Ya ta'ajab min wujudika al-labib. Okay. <clears throat> how, are you, how are you, Maulana? Yes, long time no see. I, saw you on <laughs> I didn't see you on YouTube. <laughs> I saw you on YouTube as well, actually. Yes? Your last class, which was recorded. Your last class, which was recorded. Yes, yes. It was very nice. Okay. Okay. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Wa sallillahum wa sallim wa barik ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. أما بعد فنسأل الله عز وجل بأسمائه الحسنى وصفاته العلى أن يجعلنا وإياكم من المستمعين للقول والمتبعين أحسنه إنه ولي ذلك والقادر عليه كما نسأله أن يجعل ما نقوله حجة لنا ولا علينا يوم الدين ثم أما بعد فسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته So with the will of Allah جل وعلا we are continuing with our journey through the transformative explanation of كتاب الله عز وجل because as we've mentioned last time, the goal behind each ayah fi kitabillah is to share with us a transformative something. Either to transform the way we think, transform the way we behave, or transform the way we connect to Allah Jalla wa'ala, or transform the way that we look at life. And if we see that we have a Muslim community which isn't doing quite all right, it's not because she hasn't got the Qur'an, they don't have the Qur'an in their midst but rather because they don't read the Qur'an the way they are supposed to read it. Reading the Qur'an, like we have many a Muslim here, reading the Qur'an from Fatiha to Nas, being taught how to read the rules of Tajweed, but that doesn't turn you into a better Muslim. That which makes you a better Muslim is worshipping Allah Jalla wa Ala through the Qur'an. And understanding the Quran. So this is what we are going to have a look at today. So what is very nice here is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately after mentioning the gardens and after mentioning, you know, nature, all of a sudden he speaks about Yom al Qiyamah. And when he says Wajanatin al Fafa, one of the meanings, luxuriant gardens, but al Fafa also means that the that the growth is so, how would you say? That everything is so Packed, do you say? Compact? Condensed. Condensed. Now that they say that in Jannah, you can't see the next blessing while you are in this blessing. It is like different rooms, which are surrounded by plants, which are surrounded by trees, which are surrounded by castles. So you can never see the next, what blessing you are going to. Meaning that every time it's like a new surprise. And this is Jannatin al fafa Or some say, no, Jannatin al fafa means that the leaves of the trees are like the ears of elephants. They are like the ears of elephants, meaning that they are so big. And this is how the Prophet ﷺ described a tuba. Tuba, a, a, a tree in paradise, he said ﷺ, its trunk is, is made out of what? Out of gold. And its leaves are bigger than the ears of elephants. And from it, the garments of the people of paradise are made. So whatever it means, so this is a very important principle. It is whenever multiple explanations are possible, we don't choose one, but we go for all of them. Because that is what the Quran is about. These vast meanings, these broader meanings, and we're not going to restrict now the meaning of the Qur'an to something if multiple explanations are possible. So now what we need to know as well is sometimes it seems that there is no transition. Whenever we go from one verse to another, we say, well, it seems like it are two different things. And that there is not an ayah taking us from nature all of a sudden to Yawm Al-Qiyamah. Imam Al-Buqa'i, Rahimahullah Azza wa Jal, in his book Nazm Al-Durar, he looks for these connections. It looks like, okay, it seems to be two entirely different things, but in reality it is because a common demeanor, it is because something they share, or because there is a comparison or a reminder. And this is the case here. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about dunya, 
He speaks about the fruits and the vegetables that come out of the soil. And the soil was dead. So if you see in front of your eyes that I am capable, that I'm so powerful to bring forth from that dead piece of land different kinds of fruits, different kinds of vegetables, then why do you doubt Qiyamah? It is one of the things we are always being exposed to. We are always shown that life after death or giving life to something inexistent happens. Like we were inexistent. Our fathers, they were children one day and their fathers were children one day. There was no whatsoever something of myself. So this is in reality giving life to the dead. So now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he also says Al-Fasl. And Al-Fasl here, yani it says the day of decision. That's Al-Qawl Al-Fasl. Al-Fasl is also to separate between things. Now, al tafsil is also detailed things. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about nature before this, He speaks about different kind of plants and different kind of vegetation. And exactly like this, without, yani regardless of your faith, Regardless of your race or your nation, exactly like all these plants are different and come out of the same soil, you, with, regardless the color of your skin or your roots, you will come back out of that soil again, exactly as everything else. So this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala immediately from nature goes to this. So the reason now why nature was mentioned was not as much as to mention nature as it was as to remind us of Yawm Al-Qiyamah being possible. Is that, is, that, is that clear? So the reason why nature was mentioned, yes, is to show us the power of Allah, but in first instance, because people were doubting Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And this is why, عَنِ nabi il azim some said it's Yawm Al-Qiyamah. And the reason why is because they took that away from the context. That people were not believing in an afterlife. And exactly as when you look at, subhanAllah, the, 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 the Mother Earth, Sometimes she's very beautiful. She's always beautiful. But then she has these plants and flowers and then there's autumn and winter and all of a sudden it's gone. So from the, in the same space you can find Jannah and you can find Nah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us through spring and autumn and everything else that there is Jannah, there is Nah. And this is why Imam Razi is of the opinion that the sun was created, as I said last time, in the first instance because, for, to remind us of the existence of hellfire. And there we are sunbathing. Uh -huh. We are sunbathing. Now I'm under what? Under a lamp which is telling us soon there will be a fire much fiercer than I am. So here, for me, the day of decision, I would go for the day where there is al fasl And al fasl means a day where things are separated. Yani, where things are investigated in detail. It will no longer be about your deed, but your deed will be separated from your intention. And now they will look at your intention. Is that clear? The mu'mineen will be separated. You will have muhsineen, you have muslimin, you have people sitting in the shadow amongst the muslimin, others who don't. You have the zalim and the mazloom, the oppressor and the oppressed, the, 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 the giver and the taker, and so much more. So, inna yawm al-fasli kana miqata miqata means that this day has been appointed. Yani, exactly, there is a fixed time for this. Now, the thing we need to know for us, it is not important to know when that time will happen. A lot of people say, aren't all the signs there now? When we look at the signs today, we say they are all there. They might or they might not. What do I mean? According to scholars, 500 years ago, the end of times was already there. Because everybody looks at it from their perception, right? So now, bi-idhnillahi azza wa jal, yani you can see that the, the signs only become bigger, but we don't know when they are really the last sign. But I believe that we are very close. But what is close? 500 years? 1,000 years? We don't know. So I'm, I'm, I'm not... But the Prophet ﷺ spoke about some things which I think to be quite interesting, which Imam Ghumari mentioned, al muhaddith And in his book about the end of times, and he said there will be a time, and all these hadith are authentic, where people will travel inside the bellies of iron birds. That never happened before. Where people will talk to their pockets. Like my phone is here. I'm wired to my pocket. I'm talking. It's like I'm talking to my pocket. So the Prophet ﷺ said, a time where facade will come down from the earth. Never in history has the human being been possible 
to corrupt the heavens. The heavens were always for pure things. Now, innocent people are bombarded from the heavens. Satellite signals. And he's spreading the most filthy things ever on earth through the skies. Alcohol is being consumed while people fly through the heavens. All of these things never happened. But we are also the first, apart from the Prophet Ali of course in a very different way, who can do dhikr in the sky and who can do dhikr on the water. Whenever you, you go with your car in a tunnel or a train and you're going under a lake or under a river, know that you're the first of people who are able to do dhikr beneath those who do istighfar for the alim. Can you imagine? Like the fish, they do istighfar for the alim. Now when you go through that tunnel, you are the first of generations who do dhikr underwater. That was only for the jinn before. Who would go into the water, die for Suleiman, and some amongst them would be mu'mineen and they do dhikr. So anyway, Yawm al-Fasl is a day where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will separate a mother from her son, a wife from her husband, a parent from his child, the owner from him, that which he owned, and everybody will be will come as an individual. You have come towards us as individuals. Just you alone with Rabbil Alameen. So anyway, so Yawm al Fasli kana miqata. So for me the Fasl is what? It's a decision, but it's also separating between what? Between everything I have mentioned. Um, between and the some of the scholars said with regards to the Mu'minin and the Kafirin as groups, and for the Mu'minin, everything which was not for Allah will be separated from that which was for Allah. And that's why you find in the hadith the Prophet saying that Yawm al Qiyamah the Mu'min will come with his deeds. And then Allah Jalla wa ala will take everything of it which, which was not for Allah and it will be thrown into hellfire. Why? Because it's a sin. If you pretend outwardly something to be for Allah and it isn't, it is riya. It's shirkul khafi. It is not allowed. Okay. Then here you see that this is mabni ulil majhul. Yawma yunfakhu. Now, a day when the trumpet will sound. I don't agree. Not, I don't agree with a day that the trumpet will sound because the trumpet doesn't sound on its own. The day that one that the trumpet will be blown in like this, like that. Okay. So the the, the day. Say it again. The day the trumpet will be blown. It's not just it will. It sounds. No, there is somebody doing it. Now the reason, like here, if you go back to the Arabic. The doer has not been mentioned. It said, the trumpet will be blown, but it doesn't say who. And the reason why the who is not mentioned is for many reasons. We know that it's whom? Israfil, but here it's not mentioned. So why is it not mentioned? Because the emphasis is not on the fact that the trumpet will be blown, but on the fact that we will come forward in groups. So when Allah wants to, or in Arabic, when you want to take away the attention from something to emphasize on something else, that's what you do. So then, it, then the doer is not mentioned. So that the focus will be on you will come in groups. Which group do you want to belong to? And that's why. The second thing is, sometimes when the doer is not mentioned, is to inspire you with horror. Because that you say, who will blow the, 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 what? the trumpet? Who will do that? Naam? And that, that you imagine yourself everything, well, that which you imagine him to be, he's more than that. So saying like, I know he has already been described to you, but that which you imagine is not yet that who he truly is. And that's Israfil, Naam? the angel that already has the trumpet to his mouth right now, he has already inhaled, like the Prophet Sallallahu said, and his eye, eyebrows are frowned. And he's like this. And he's now waiting, looking at the ash for the order to be given, and he doesn't blink his eye. And the Prophet Sallallahu said, why doesn't he blink his eye? He said, because he is afraid that the order will be given, and that that will be at the very moment where his eyes open and close. So he's so concentrated. So, يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ 
Yani that day, yani the trumpet and so forth, and you will come forward in crowds. Yani the crowds meaning al maru, yani like the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, you will be uh, revived or you will be brought to life again with those who you loved most. So if your love for the Prophet sallallahu was strongest, you will be with him. And if it was for a singer of Hollywood or Bollywood, then you will be with that actor. If it was with whomever you like a lot, who you look up to, there's a difference between knowing that I should love the Prophet sallallahu more or really loving him more. And now you can say, oh, it's easy, is it? Umar radiallahu anhu came to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He said, Ya Rasulallah, I love you more than my wealth, my health, and my parents, and the entire world apart from myself. So even Umar, who was at that level, at that particular instance, he loved himself more than the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa And he was who he was. And then the Prophet sallallahu said, No, Ya Umar, until you love me more than yourself. And then Umar radiallahu anhu immediately, and that's because he was this great man, said, and I love you more than myself. So it is not an easy thing. How are we going to weigh that? How are we going to know whether we will be in the group of the Prophet وسلم, sitting next to him, close to him? There is a mizan. There is a scale. There is a balance. And that is where we weigh our claims on. And that's the balance of the Sharia. Ah. The Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said, and I have mentioned this hadith before, he said, whenever someone amongst you has been afflicted with something, that he finds his strength in thinking about my death. Because nothing has afflicted you as much as my death. Meaning that whenever you feel saddened or whenever you feel down and you think of the death of the Prophet wasallam, then that sadness disappears. Because you are overwhelmed by the sadness of the Prophet ﷺ not being there, of you and myself not have been allowed to look into his eyes or to shake his hand or he, with our ears hear him yani read the Qur'an, which doesn't always mean that we are bad because sometimes Allah wants good people to live later on so that they would guide the Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ. So if that is you, that, that you see you live now, but that you're of benefit to the Ummah, then that's the reason why you are alive now and not because you, you are bad. But if your life is of no added value to the Ummah of Muhammad wasallam, then even if you were to have lived in his time, you wouldn't have been of any benefit. Um, so that's very important. And this is why the Prophet wasallam made it very clear that my brothers, there are those at the end of times who would give up on their wealth and health and houses and children and family just to see me. So with whom do you want to be? That, that's the question you need to ask yourself. And then amongst the mu'mineen, you will have people divided, like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, the sabiqeen, the muqarrabeen, yani those who compete in hasanat, who are close and near to Allah, and then you have ashab al-yameen. Ashab al-yameen are the 9 to 5 Muslims. It just means it's my, it's my wadifa, not wadifa, it's my, my job. I just have to be a Muslim and I do what I have to do and that's it. And then they, they look for their dunya. And then you have the muqarrabin. There are those who always strive for more because they know that their pension is not here. Here's the time to work. We, we don't have a day off here. It doesn't exist. Everything is for Allah. So who do you want to be? The ashab al yameen their jannah, is not as good as the what? As the muqarrabun. And Allah says about the people who are very near to Allah, ثُلَّةٌ مِنَ الْأَوَّلِينَ وَقَلِيلٌ مِنَ الْأَخِرِ yani The first generations, you have a lot of them. But in the last generations, you have a few of them. And when he speaks about Ashab al-Yameen, he says a lot of the first generations and a lot of the last. Who do you want to be? So here, let's continue. يَوْمَ يُنْفَخُ فِي الصُّورِ فَتَأْتُونَ أَفْوَاجَ وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابًا There is also another qira'ah which says وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ Here it says when the sky will open up like wild, wide portals. And then when we say فُتِحَتْ is they blast open. It's just like there it goes. And then أَبْوَابًا 
Yani Imam al-Razi says, and the entire sky will turn into one door. And the plural was only used to say, like if you have a door here, and a door here, and a door here, and a door here, and a door. So this doesn't count anymore. It looks like it's one door. You understand what I mean? So when Allah said, فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابَ So if we are going to say, فُتِّحَتْ نعم, the, the sky will blast open and will be like one door. أو فتحت السماء فكانت أبوابا يعني or the sky will open and it will be different doors according to the قراءة so it can be that first is this then it's that when it will blast open يعني why if we say that it are different doors then each door will be for a separate angel who has been created for one reason وجاءت كل نفس معها سائق وشهيد Yani, and every soul will come that day, says Allah in Surah Qaf, with a sa'iq. Yani, the sa'iq is the one who drives you, the one who steers you, the one who drags you. Nam yasuquk. And the angel will come and you will be attached and he will walk yani, towards yani, the place where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will ask you about your deeds. So that's what we mean when we say, if this is the earth, everywhere will be doors. Billions, qu quadrillions, zillions of doors. And from these doors, all the sa'iqun will come down. So that's the first instance. But then because there are so many doors, now the sky is about to collapse because the empty spaces are more than the pillars of the doors. So now it will blast open. Why will it blast open? Because now the Arsh of Rahman will be carried by the angels. Yani it says, yani and the sky will blast open, it will become weak. Why is it weak? Because of all these doors now. So, and now the Arsh needs to be brought down, the Arshul Malik. Now to show that he is in command. And he is in command, it doesn't have to show it. But it's to inspire us with horror and fear and awe and respect. So first, according to the first qira'ah, وَفُتِحَتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتَ أَبْوَابًا yani, The skies will be opened and there will be different doors. That's for your personal angel to come down. But now the Hamalatul Arsh need to come down. They don't fit. They, they can't go through this door. Because they are the biggest of angels after Jibreel alayhi salam. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi salam said, like the angels who carry the Arsh, their feet are on the, on the face of the earth. And the arsh rests on their what? On their head. And a bird can fly, fly between their earlobe and their neck for 700 years. So they don't fit that door. Because they carry, the, they carry the arsh. وَيَحْمِلُ عَرْشَ رَبِّكَ فَوْقَ, فوقه يَوْمَ إِذٍ ثَمَانِيَ مِنَ الْمَلَائِكَةَ أَوْ ثَمَانِيَةَ صفوف. Yani eight angels or eight rows of angels. But I go for eight angels. Eight angels, how strong are they? How big are they? And there you are, and they come down, and you see everything happening. But after the sky is blasting open, like, boom, now it's one door, and everybody's looking. So now you see how different qira'at support one another. Did you see that? Like one qira'a, second qira'a, when you first look at it, you think like, oh, we have a problem. Because how can it be many doors and one door at the same time? Either it is many doors, so many that it seems that the sky is entirely open, or you can give it two dimensions. This happens and that happens. And then that, this would be the explanation. Now what you see here once again is you see here yunfahu futiha. The doer is never mentioned. And why it is not mentioned, we said at the beginning, so that it is emphasizing on how you will feel. How will you feel? It is like the, the, the earth and the universe has gone wild. It's enraged. You don't see the doer. It's, it's like it's all happening and you don't know where it's coming from. And that's why the, the what? The, the doer is not mentioned. So that it looks like is a wild beast, untamed beast, enraged. That, that goes from left to right and there is no harmony, there is no uh, whatsoever. Everything seems to be out of control. So, 
فَكَانَتْ أَبْوَابًا And then you can go. So now what happens? Before you go, go back down. I don't want them to see it yet. So now when this happens, right? In what situation is a human being when he's in fear? They say they, it's either fight or flight. Fight or flight. When you see these angels, you're not going to tell you, well, let me fight. No? Let me fight. You'll say, let me run away. So now you are looking around you and you are looking for a shelter. This is, this is what, what comes to our minds. Where can I hide? Where can I flee? So then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, you will see the mountains and you will say exactly like the son of Nuh. Yani, I will escape to the mountain. Ya'asimuni, it will protect me. So people now knowing that they are in need of protection because they came with a lot of wrongdoings. So they run to the mountains, but the moment they arrive when the mountains will vanish like a mirage. That's just to crush your hope. That's to crush the hope. So, so you see these mountains at first. That's what you see. So I'm going to hide. That day your place is in front of your Lord. Um, and of course not a physical being in frontness. So then الْجِبَالُ فَكَانَتْ سَرَابًا So now you are on a plain piece of earth which is hard. It is not made of so soil. The Sahaba said it's like a silver coin. Shining, bright. You can't look down because it's so bright. So you need to look up. So the reason yani, that you're, you will be looking up is because you have to see everything. And Jahim will be seen by everybody. She will be shown to everybody. Once again, yani, the doer is not mentioned. So because it is shining so bright, you need to be like that. Why is it shining? Because the sun is there. The sun is right above your head. So shining on that silver coin, which looks like a silver coin, no shade whatsoever, no trees, no mountains, no nothing. And then inna jahannam kanat mirsada. And then the only thing after everything disappears, when the angels have come down, when you hear people shouting, crying, horrified, yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Jahannam, hell lies in wait. It's like she made her trap already. No, they say she's waiting for you. Inhale, exhale. You know, she's going and the flames that day, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that people will be how Jahannam Jithiya. All the people, also the Muslims, they will be around Jahannam on their knees. Look, this is what you're either going to or what you will be escaping from. Hawla Jahannam Jithiya. And they are what? Wa tara kulla ummatin kulla umma jathiya. And you will see that each community is on their knees. Each community, without exception, on their knees on Yawm Qiyamah. Tara kulla ummatin jathiya. And in each ummah, du'a ila kitabiha. Yani, so now, yani Jahannam, she, uh, do we say luring? Yes. Lurk, lurking? Okay, she's lurking. Like she's really waiting for you. Why? Because you are her few. Not you. Because you are her few. And that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fear hellfire alati waquduha nasu al hijara. Her fuel is people and stones. Why people and stones? Because the hearts of those who go to Jahannam are harder than stone. So inna Jahannam kanat mirsada. So now barakallahu fikum, when you see Jahannam, there are many different names for Jahannam. There are many different names for hellfire. And each name has a different meaning. And I will take that to the next class, inshallah, where we will start with the different names of hellfire and why they are being named as such. And then you will see that the punishment which is connected to that name in hellfire makes so much sense. To always yani, 
translated as hell, then why Allah didn't say all the time nar, 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 or jahannam, jahannam, jahannam? There is saqar, there is so much hutama, there is so much more. Okay? There is jaheem. Okay. Littaghina ma'aba. It says a home for the oppressors. Well, yes. Sarab. Okay. Exactly like in the dunya, they had the illusion that they would be able to save themselves. Yukhadi'oon Allah wa huwa khadi'uhum. Like they look at these mountains and think them to be mountains. But we have other narration, uh, other ayat where it says that you will see the mountains being crushed and crumbled. So th these are the different stages, right? But one of them is that it's a mirage. And this is a azab for the people who live their delusion. Nam, who said like, we will escape on the day of judgment. Nam, and they are the ones for whom the mountains will be a mirage. And the others who had more sayyat and hasanat and said, I'm okay, they will see the mountains being crushed and they know, oh, if they are crushed, then so will I. So for each, each person that day, for each fawj, and Allah spoke about afwaja, the mountains will do something different, which is in harmony with their shortcoming. So it's a ajib day. إِنَّ جَهَنَّمَ كَانَتْ مِرْصَادًا لِلطَّاغِينَ مَآبًا al maab is something where you return to. It is not just a home. It is something where you return to. So why did Allah say return to? He didn't say manzila. He didn't say mustaqar. He didn't say muqama. He said maaba. Nam yaubu. He goes back to something. Why? Because everybody amongst us has already told Allah where he wants to be. When he showed us 50,000 years before the creation, yani 50,000 years after 50,000 years before creation of the heavens and the earth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took everybody out of the back of Adam. And every soul which was going to be given a body was already asked, Alastu bi rabbikum. Am I not your Lord? And some of them said yes while they meant it. And others of them said no. Not meaning that they didn't believe in Allah, but they were shown the way to hell and the way to paradise. According to some scholars, it refers to that. Al-Huda is also showing. We showed him the way to paradise and we showed him the way to hell. Like in the example I always give, this is a 5,000 star hotel. No? 5,000. But the problem is, it takes about 600 years to get there. 600 years to get there. Huh? So people are shown these two ways. This way here huh? is filled with what? With atrocities and diseases and problems. And you have water every 500 kilometers. But this one doesn't go to the five-star hotel. This one goes to a minus 5,000 stars. <laughs> I don't want to know what that looks like. I was in the ambassador hotel in, in, in Sudan. Uh, that was terrible. So yeah, the name was nice, but the reality of it was very strange. So anyway, so you have this. But this way, 600 years, on the road, there are five-star hotels. You don't have to work. You're always okay. So now when we were created, we... So that way, we saw that way. But this seems to be so far away, 600 years. Let me just enjoy now. I will see what happens later. So some people, Allah said, كَلَّا بَلْ تُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ وَتَذَرُونَ الْآخِرَةِ He said, no, you love the quick life. Yani the, to being rewarded right now, straight, right now. تُحِبُّونَ الْعَاجِلَةِ And you want to enjoy now. You want to have everything you desire, you desire, you dream of, you crave for. And then other people said, we will be patient. And the, these are the ones who chose back then who they wanted to be. You read it in the car, right? So to some, it goes back to that. The one who chose for Jannah back then, his way to Jannah here will be facilitated and the one who chose back then for not his way to jannah will be made difficult 
You see that? So if you're going to look at this, then why do we live? As, so that there wouldn't be an argument. So that we know. Like because Allah knew what we wanted. So he could have immediately placed us in hellfire or in Jannah. But then we would say like, why? Well, he's showing us the why. This life is showing us the why. You see that? And this is why when the people of hellfire go into hell, and they will be asked, didn't, weren't there any messengers that were sent to you? What, didn't the message get to you? They say this about themselves. They say, yes, it reached us. But the punishment now, that we are receiving here is justified. Nobody will enter into hellfire thinking that this is unjust. He will say, yes, this is what I deserve. And that's the biggest pain. Knowing that that which you are receiving as a torment is justified. So you can't go, you can only blame yourself. Don't blame me, blame yourself. And Surah Ibrahim, I, will, I cannot help you, you cannot help me. So, so they are returning to that place where they belong. They are returning to it. They are returning to the result of their choices. They build their own hellfire. Okay? To stay therein for a long, long time. So this verse, according to some, like Ibn Taymiyyah and Ibn Al-Qayyim, but they say that he... He, he didn't hold on to that opinion until he died. Wallahu alam. Yani, la bithina fiha ahqaba would show that hellfire would not be an eternal blazing fire, but that it will stop one day. Because ahqaba doesn't mean an eternity. Naam? Ahqaba can be like a thousand years and a thousand years or a hundred years and a hundred years. So meaning ahqaba, there needs to come to an end to ahqaba because otherwise it would be an eternity. Do you see that? But we have other ayat. I mean, it's very obvious and clear. So the ahqaba, according to a razi, and try to follow me, and for a very long time therein, they will taste no coolness nor, nor drink. Meaning that the ahqaba is referring to the kind of punishment. And there can be taqdeem in the lugha. There is no problem. So this verse is explaining this, that a kind of punishment they will receive for a long, long, long time will be that they taste no coolness, no drink. Well, will they ever taste coolness? Yes. But a coolness which what? Which tortures them. Zamharir. That is the coldness in hellfire. Because in hellfire there is cold and there is hot. And you can burn yourself when something is too cold. That also leave, leaves burn marks and it rips, it tears off your skin when you're you know, against it and you take it away, it goes away. So in Jahannam there is either being punished with heat or with cold. So you can imagine that when you were punished with heat and then you have coolness, the very first microsecond, you say, ah, a relief, and then you get punished. No, they won't have that. No? So they will taste no coolness nor drink during that entire period. No, nor drink. Well, the only thing they get to drink is what? Is. No, pus, right? And, and boiling water. That's the only thing. And they will drink the sweat of the people of hellfire. So here, because their throats are dry, they say, I don't care. I just want some fluid going through my throat. So even that they don't, don't get. So it's burning hot. Hot like hell. Literally. And they're not allowed to drink. And this is ahqaba. And, one moment. Then he says, accept. And if they really want to drink, they will drink that which is scalding and dark. Um, so therein, they will have no coolness and no, will not drink. 
apart from that. So you also have pus, you have blood that you can drink in Jahannam. You have so many different things. So we will get to that one day. I mean, not in it one day, to that point, explaining it one day. Nam. Okay, are there any questions? Nam. That lasts Ahqaba. So Ahqaba is true. It doesn't refer to it an eternity. Exactly. Exactly. Yani, during these Ahqaba, there will be periods in time where this will be their only, only where this will be the kind of punishment that they will be given. Okay, so it doesn't refer to Jahannam being, being Ahqaba because it is true what Ibn Taymiyyah says. If you say just Ahqaba, it has to come to an end because otherwise it's no longer called Ahqaba. No. But then it should, then you can't, then there should come an end to it because if it doesn't come to an end at all, then we can't keep on calling it Ahqaba, then we need to call it eternity. But I understand what you mean, and it has been said. No. Mm -hmm. Yes, that yes, 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 yes. Then here, if now you think that this is a bit too harsh, well it is it is jaza and we It is a fitting how do you pronounce this? Requital? It is a fitting requital. We already spoke about this. Like, if you go to prison, and it's good to mention it again. MashaAllah, that wipe's so good. <laughs> so here, if you go to prison, um, Khayyam, you are. You are in prison. So imagine you're in prison, and the judge says... 500 years and he says two square meters and he says no window he says no visitors and he says no television no desk no chair that's what he says for 500 years now when you enter into prison all of a sudden it is 30 square meters and you have five, wi five windows. And you can have a bubble of 20. No social distancing. A bubble of 20 getting into your room. You have five flat screens. You have 1,000 channels. You're still in prison, right? So meaning that he's told you this is, the this is the punishment you should get, but you're still under my mercy. Now, after 100 years, this bubble of 20 turns into a bubble of five. These five windows turn into two windows. The chair is gone and the rest is still there. Now he has taken it away. Your punishment has what increased, but it hasn't. You're still under the mercy because your punishment is not yet in harmony with what you, with the what, with the verdict. And this is how it goes in Jahannam. Whatever we receive in Jahannam, it is never what we should receive. And Allah Jalla wa ala is Al-Alim, Al-Hasib. Yani he knows how to divide that, how to do that. But in that eternity, you will never get the punishment which Allah thinks you deserve. So the people of Jahannam are actually, although being punished, living in His mercy. Jaza'an wifaqa. What's the time now? So what time is this normal? Oh, okay. Okay. So go in the home care. Okay, till here, inshallah. Then next week, Yani, uh, we are going to finish, uh, not finish, we are going to finish that which has to do with hell and so forth, inshallah. So are there any questions about what has been said? So the first thing I want you to know is how important it is to look for the connection between the ayat. That's number one. How important it is at the same time as well to look at the linguistic nuances because otherwise you will explain the Qur'an 
in another way. You can't just say the trumpet will sound. It, no, that, it doesn't mean that. No? And then a third thing is the importance of qira'at. Did you see that? So the importance of qira'at. And the fourth thing, or fifth, I don't know anymore, is to look at the complete picture. Like Mawlana Asim said, what about the Miraj? Like because we read so many different things about the mountains on the Day of Judgment, but everything is according to the person, uh, is in harmony with the, the, what, the qualities or the, the absence of these qualities any, uh, on the Day of Judgment. So some people will see this, some will see that. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alam. Yes. Are there any questions? Yes. Yes. It means, wifqan li a'malihim. Yes. No, the wifaqan, Yani, it means like in, in this in this case, Yani Wifaq and the punishment they give is in, in harmony with their deeds. But that doesn't mean that it can get more. No? If you deserve twenty, I can give you thirty. But if you deserve if you don't deserve thirty, I can't give you forty. Do you understand what I mean? So your value, for example, as a player is a football player is at least, for example, one million. I can give you one million and two. But I can't give you 800,000. The same uh, rule applies with gender. So when we did, what, uh, we said that the highest level of gender is that our actions. It's just for the mercy of Allah. Yes, exactly. We're all in the mercy of Allah. But this is also why Allah subhanahu wa says in the Quran, وَلَا نَزِيكُمْ إِلَّا عَذَابًا We will only increase your punishment. Why increase it? Not above what, what you deserve. But we will increase it in regards to what you are in. So when you compare today to tomorrow, uh, to yesterday, it will be more. But it will still be what you deserve. Why? Because you haven't reached, you didn't exceed the level of torment which you should deserve. Okay? So that's what. So everybody in, in Jahannam is at, yani, has adal. There is no zulm. وَمَا أَنَا بِظَلَّامٍ لِلْعَبِيدِ I don't oppress my servants. Although that the scholars say, even if Allah were to put the most pious person in hell, he wouldn't be zalim. He wouldn't be a wrongdoer. Why? Because we are his possession. But he has promised us and Allah doesn't break his promise. A question, sisters, brothers? No one? Mm. No. Mm. No. No. The, what I believe, Sadie, is it can be that this will happen in this life, but it will definitely happen hereafter. So it might be isharatan, maybe. But we, we know that it's definitely Yawm Qiyamah. And I found that a lot of people, modernists, um, very often, they try to give a more plausible explanation which will be accepted by the modern Muslim or by the scientists. And in order to please people, and they say we do this for Allah so that they will embrace Islam. Because if we speak about flying horses and, and, and you know mountains collapsing and angels coming down, this might push them away from accepting Islam. The problem is you accept Islam either how it is or you don't. And then a lot of people might be living in Islam, which is not Islam, thinking that they're Muslim, but in reality, believing things which go against the message. So I believe it's very important that we watch out for that. So that we find people who know how to harmonize between sciences and the text, the text and the context. So if we have people who can do that, it would be beautiful. No? But... Um, it's the, we, we're living dangerous times, Sadie. I, I feel that the approach of the Mu'tazila is coming back. While they had been erased for so many different years, the approach, I don't mean the aqidah of them, but rather the, the approach of, of, of the Nusus. It's worse. It's worse. The, exactly. So the Mu'tazila, they weren't shayateen. They weren't people who tried to kill religion. Just their approach, the aqli naqli approach was, was a bit off. They had great scholars, like Al-Qadi Abdul-Jabbar in his book, 
يعني تنزيل القران عن المطاعن فور اكزامبل ان اذر بوكس ار انكريدبل زمخشري اكسكيوز مي ذي ار فيري بايس امام زمخشري واز واز نون فور بينج ا فيري بايس مان سو اني واي هي لوست هيز ليج يو نو وايل هي واز ترافلينج ثرو ذا كولد ارياز اند ذي سي هي ديدنت كومبلين وانس اند هي كيبت اون برينج ستاندينج اب وايل هاد اول ذا ريزنز تو سيت داون ديورينج هيز برير هي واز مارتيزيلا رحمهم الله عز وجل. Okay, that's it. بارك الله فيكم جزاكم الله خيرا. So we have classes on Wednesday at 9 a.m. and that's the explanation of Riyadh Salihin. And on Sunday, not this weekend, we have a weekend off. Yes, the weekend after. Uh, so anyway, say, say. We've got class on Wednesday, Riyadh Salihin. And Friday, we have Sahih Again, on Sunday, we have Aqidah and we have Minhajul Abidin. Yep. Okay. Zakum Akhira.